Hi, uh, welcome to today's devotional podcast with Dr. Jacob Al. Uh, we are continuing our series on uh, naked and not ashamed, uh, still on the female reproductive system. And we are going to part, to part three of uh, how menstruation stops is the topic, which is part three of the whole uh, menstrual cycle. Uh, so um, we are once again going to read a verse for the day, which is uh, Psalm 139, 13 to 14. For you formed me, you formed my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and I know this very well. Okay, so we have been looking at the menstruation uh, cycle uh, to, with regards to the woman reproductive system. So uh, as soon as each area of the old lining has been shed and washed away, the blood vessels in, uh, in that patch returns to their original size, uh, becoming sealed and again closed. And finally, only a few patches remain to be cleared away. So we, we did talk about uh, in our last uh, series, we talked about how uh, the, the the whole menstrual uh, ten is is a way of cleansing the uterus of the, of the woman. So uh, this cleansing is done when the 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 body stops secreting uh, certain hormones that will keep the lining of the uterus intact. Uh, but we know that uh, when the whole uterus is ready for the reception of a fertilized egg and that never happens, then uh, menstruation comes in to cleanse the whole uterus and make it ready for the next uh, cycle. And, and that, is, that is what happens. So um, this blood will stop in the end. So the flow that uh, tempers off uh, and ends, the flow of the blood will temper off and ends when it's, it's, it gets to the end of the menstrual uh, uh, period. So what had been a deep red spongy lining is reduced to a smooth pink surface, ready for new growth. Uh, and so, uh, as as we said in the last series, I mean, this is a, an amazing uh, system and mechanism the Lord has put in place to cleanse uh, the woman's uterus. And as mentioned, the most fascinating thing to me was the fact that um, this is the only type of bleeding in human life that is not considered injurious in the sense that is the bleeding of the woman is not a bad thing, but a good thing in the sense that the woman does not actually lose blood that will cause her to be anemic. Uh, it's a sharing and a washing away of the uterus. And I think that this is uh, an amazing discovery. And, and so uh, women don't need to be scared uh, and they should always expect it and consider it to be a good thing in the sense that it's a cleansing that takes place in their uterus. So it, it ends at a point. And when that, that happens, it, it's the beginning uh, of the end. It, that uh, then becomes what we... It, it, this is how menstruation begins and, and, and then ends. For the first time, in adolescence, and each time uh, after that until uh, menopause. So we have looked at how this whole menstruating happens when that body stops secreting the, the, the hormones that uh, needs to be kept to keep the uterus lining intact. Uh, and 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 when that happens, uh, and there is this washing away of the whole uterus, uh, then something new begins, um, uh, and.
and the circle will continue. It will begin, the cycle will, will, will continue. So the number of days of menstruation, uh, the amount of the growth and the shedding of uh, the lining tends to be consistent uh, with most women, uh, and they find that their menstrual uh, circles will always be, uh, the, their menstrual circle will always be uh, around the same time. Now, it is said that the, the average is four to five days. That's the, the number of days that the menstrual period takes. It, it's usually four to five days. However, it is very typical for some women in, many, in, in, in menstruation. Uh, it's very normal for some women to menstruate, to menstruate only two to three days. So it is between um, the, 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 the period of menstruation is normally four to five days, but um, it is not out of place to find that some women, it only takes two to three days, and that should not be any uh, cause of alarm for those who have it between four to uh, uh, five days and those obviously who have it excuse me, in a shorter number of days, uh, it obviously are uh, at an advantage and they don't go through this exercise of padding for longer than that. Now, for others, um, equally normal, it may be a whole week or more. So women should not be al alarmed when the menstruation takes period takes longer. It takes about a week. For some women, that is the number of days that the bleeding uh, takes in their uh, men menstruation period. And so it's normal and should not be a cause of any alarm. Then uh, we, 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 we want to uh, then say that uh, uh, the, the number of days between one menstrual period and the next is generally far less consistent than the number of flow days. So what we are saying here is, look, uh, the number of days that it will take from your last, the woman's last menstruation to when it will begin, um, then those number of days sort of varies. But the number of actual days of bleeding during the menstrual cycle is very consistent. So if the woman observes that she usually bleeds between three to five days, uh, that is pretty much consistent. Or maybe three days or four days, the woman can zero it down to exactly how many number of days the bleeding takes. And that is important to note. Now, however, uh, the woman cannot uh, uh, predetermine exactly with exactitude, but there can be some... Some types of inference can be done to see when the next menstruation cycle will begin, but uh, the, the number of days that it takes from the last one to the next one it, it is, is, is not consistent. It's less consistent than the actual number of days it takes. So the average length of the menstrual cycle from day one of menstruation to the day of the following uh, process is between... 26 uh, to 32 days. So you calculate the number of days from your last menstruation to when you should expect the next one. It should be between 26 to uh, 32 days. So this is only an average. And almost all women occasionally vary at least a day or two, uh, many uh, vary by several days from the time to time, and some uh, are always quite irregular. So, so, so these days calculations uh, vary from woman to woman, and, and that is why, as a woman or probably a, a young girl, an adolescent, um, it is important you begin to keep records of this record the regularities and the when it began and when it ends. And throughout the year, for a good number of two years, when you keep records of this, you will see the pattern follows. And then you will get to know 
exactly when your menstrual period begins, how many time, how many days it takes usually for the bleeding to begin and to end. And then you would be consistently able to know how many days it takes from your last menstruation to the next one. So that if you don't happen to see it happen within those period of days, uh, it's not, it, it, may not, it may not necessarily be a sign of being pregnant, but at least it gives you an idea of how many more days you should be looking at to see whether you can confirm that you are pregnant or not. So, um, uh, because why? We did mention that the only time that uh, menstruation doesn't take place is when there's a fertilized egg. So, if, for instance, you've pretty much zeroed down the number of days that is between your last menstruation uh, to the next, you've pretty much zeroed it down. And then you realize that it doesn't happen within the 26 days or 30 days that you have been calculating over the years, then it, it, it doesn't happen. Then you can begin to say, oh, probably, hey, uh, I have the good news. Uh, I've picked seed, okay? Um, and, and, and so the, these days are very important. It, it gives a lot of information to the young girl or to the woman or the mother, the wife. These are days, a number of days that, you know, is so helpful. So this is, uh, it's only the average dates we have given. We said between 26 to 32 days is the period that is between the last menstruation to your next one. If, as a woman, you have detailed this for years, that you can zero it down to an exact number, then it's beneficial to you. Because you know that at a certain date, if I don't get my menstruation, then I probably need to begin to think whether I've picked seed or not. But if you don't know the exact number of days, it's just going to be guesswork that, you know, you, you are not aware whether uh, the menstruation has delayed as a result of a problem or just that... Um, uh, you have actually picked seed. So knowing these days are, are very helpful. Knowing them are very helpful. So this, the, this is, this is uh, the, the average we have, we have given. And almost every woman occasionally vary from time to time, uh, as we have said. So the essential factor to remember is that throughout the years, each woman establishes her own general menstrual pattern, uh, which becomes normal for her, but which should be expected to have some unpredictability and variations from time to time. Now, you may be able to zero it down to the number of days that, for instance, the blood actually flows and stops, and you may be able to zero it down to the number of days that it takes from your last menstruation to the next, which is great. But don't be surprised if you get some variations from time to time. Because why? The human body is uh, an organism and it's not static. So uh, something could happen that will just alter it slightly. So make room for such slight alterations and don't just be scared when you miss something a day or two, or something happens earlier in your body, don't let that scare you. Because your body is a living organism, and it is bound to have changes. And so take note of that. So in this concluding paragraph, now only uh, one of the early signs of uh, cancer for the cervix may be bleeding after sexual intercourse. So th these are very good information and tips uh, for wives to take note of. Uh, a, a cervix, cervical cancer is very real. But the thing is this, when it's detected early, it makes a whole lot of difference. So this is information that can be helpful to every woman. When 
you see that you begin to bleed after every sexual intercourse, then it should be concerning. And you should try to get to your doctor to investigate further to see what is happening. So as a woman and a man, especially the woman, you are the one who will detect that, hey, at any time after sexual intercourse, I appear to be bleeding. It could be a sign. Now, it's not uh, exactly what we will tell you that, oh, it's cervical cancer. But at least with this information, you will take it serious and go immediately to ask your doctor to check you or get a doctor to check you out because that is a sign when you have sexual intercourse with your husband, with your spouse, and you realize that thereafter you bleed. When it's way off your menstrual period, then there is a problem, and you should contact your health person immediately so they can do further investigations to be sure that it is not cancerous. But uh, even if it is that, it is caught early enough to make a difference, okay? Very important. And, and one of the signs of cancer of the uterus may be uh, spotting uh, small amounts of blood between menstrual periods. So, for instance, if you, it takes 26 days uh, from your last menstruation to your next as a woman, and you are expecting that, but um, maybe in between the 26 days, you get spotty bleedings uh, somewhere between the lines, between the periods of menstruation. That should be a sign that there could be uh, something wrong. And so um, it, it, it is one of the tips for uterine cancers. So it, it, once you see that after your menstruation, in between the days, you experience some slight bleeding or whatever from time to time, then it is important you don't take it for granted, but you report this straight to your doctor and let them further investigate, do further tests to be sure that uh, uh, your uterus is not cancerous. Now, as I said, this is good information that will help our young women, our mothers and, and, and sisters to understand that we have this information, and we have the experience, if it does happen, any of these two, that you find yourself bleeding after intercourse, then don't take it for granted. Don't joke with it. Contact your doctor and let them do some further investigations to rule out cancer of the cervix. Now, again, the vital information, if there are spotty bladders between the periods of uh, menstruation, then don't take it lightly as a woman. Don't take it lightly. Take it seriously and do further investigation to rule out whether you have uh, uh, cancer in your uterus. Uh, and so these are good information for both couples, okay? If, if there is any unusual bleeding, you should report to your doctor for an examination, for further tests. Free information, good information uh, to help us uh, young women and even mothers that we will keep good care, we will take good care of this special temple the Lord has blessed us with. So uh, you may be listening to this podcast and say, okay, Pastor Jacob, unfortunately, I already have cervix, cervical cancer or I'm going through chemo or treatment because of cervical cancer, or maybe even uterus cancer. I, I want to pray with you and believe the Lord that you will be touched and every cancer cell will vanish in Jesus' name. If it's cervical cancer, we are going to pray coming against these two diseases that attacks uh, this uh, menstrual period and time. And we're going to ask for divine touch. If you are listening to the sound of my voice, Believe by faith that even as I pray, you are going to get your healing in Jesus' precious name. 
Let's pray. My Lord and Savior Jesus, I bring before you these women listening all over the world and who have had access to this podcast. As we have discussed cervix and the uterus, cervical cancer and the uterus, we pray that if there be anyone under the influence who is listening to my voice right now and have any of these, any cervical cancer, any uterus cancer, I declare them healed in Jesus' name. I declare and decree that they are healed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for we are healed by his stripes. By his stripes we are healed. And therefore we cry and we call for healing into your body to get rid of every cervical cancer, get rid of every uterus cancer in the name of Jesus, that our sisters will be able to enjoy themselves. They will live and not die to declare the mighty works of God. Thank you for taking time to listening to uh, today's devotional podcast. And if you need uh, further information, uh, do not hesitate to contact us uh, through uh, Facebook inbox uh, messaging or even through WhatsApp message. You can get me there and send me your, um, uh, uh, your questions and your encouragement and your recommendations as to what we can do to improve uh, this podcast. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have a great night. Bye.